Okay, we're back and we're doing some rotations and this is typically what a lot of students find to be the toughest kind of rotations problem. It's rolling and slipping at the same time. Uh, we're, we're so used to doing rolling without slipping, uh, especially numerically, because uh, there, there's some things that we can use to simplify the problem. The big thing when there's no slipping is that there's a connection between things like the linear acceleration of the object and the uh, angular acceleration. And the same thing for uh, the speeds, linear speed and, and angular speeds. Uh, this would be the case when there's no slipping. We can simplify these things are connected to one another. If you find one, you have the other because there's only a, a factor of radius and so on. So with slipping, these, these conditions are no longer true. We can't make that connection. They're independent of each other. The good news is uh, we're going to set these up exactly the same way that you're used to doing. If you have a yo-yo, if you have something rolling, um, you know, things like this, your typical sorts of rolling problems. Uh, when you have both motions, f equals ma is going to be our our starting point for linear motion and torque equals I alpha is our starting point for the rotational motion. The only difference is we can no longer make these substitutions to help us out. Okay, so there's an additional unknown. Uh, I guess that means if we want to be able to solve the problem they have to give us some other information. They'll perhaps give us the friction that they'll, if, if you're doing like a rolling problem. They might give us the tension in a string if you're doing like a yo-yo problem. Um, one other thing I, I did want to point out, a lot of people forget about, is with energy. Uh, no slipping, you never had to worry about heat being produced. You never worried about friction and the work done by friction. Um, when there is slipping, now we're talking kinetic friction. There, there's actually rubbing, like rubbing your hands when it's cold out. And because when there's rubbing, then there's being heat produced. So there, there would be an extra term if you're doing um, an energy type of problem. Let's take a look at one of these. I will do one example of, of something rolling and slipping down an incl incline. Let's say it's a solid ball. Okay, so we, we know the inertia here is going to be two-fifths m r squared. Because they're slipping, um, we have to find a and alpha separately the linear acceleration and the angular acceleration. But, in this problem, I'm going to give you the coefficient of kinetic friction. That's usually something that's not given in a rolling without slipping problem. <laughs> okay, so there's a trade-off. If, if, um, if, if we can't make a connection between the two accelerations, then we have to have some other information to be able to solve the problem. Okay, so the way we'd normally approach this, regardless if they're slipping or no slipping, is the force diagram. We know there's gravity, we know there's a normal force, and we know that there's friction which is going to create the torque. Okay, um, That's the same force diagram no matter what kind of problem you have. For the linear motion going down the hill, F equals MA is going to look like mg sine theta minus the friction. Okay, that, that downhill um, portion of gravity. And then the friction going uphill. Now torque equals I alpha is for the rotational motion. And here's a case where gravity doesn't cause a torque, and that neither does the uh, normal force, but the friction does. So friction times the radius of the ball times the sine of 90 degrees. So the setup, look at this. The setup is exactly the same as if there were no slipping. Okay. Now the thing is we have to solve these independently because we, we no longer have this connection between A and alpha. Okay. But that's okay. We, we can actually do that because let's, let's start over here with the linear motion and try to find this linear acceleration down the hill. The fact that we're given the coefficient of friction means we can find the friction force. 
Okay, that's the coefficient of friction times normal force. So we have mu, our normal force is mg cosine theta when we're on a hill. Okay, so all of a sudden the mass drops out and we've got our answer. g sine theta minus 0.1 g cosine theta. Okay, just like that we can pop it out. And it'll be a similar thing over here with the torque equation. We can plug in our inertia. We have to keep alpha as alpha. We, we can't make a substitution because there is slipping. And now we've got our, our friction force. I'll do the same thing over here. UMG times the cosine of the angle of the hill. That's all times radius and the sine of 90 is 1. So the mass drops out. Uh, one of the R's goes away. And we can solve for alpha. Okay, so we, we're going to have 5 halves comes up. We're going to have um, 0.1 times g cosine theta. And that's all going to be over the radius. So just like that, we have uh, we have our two answers. We have the two accelerations for this thing as it rolls and slips down the incline. Uh, let me just point out um, the, the other the other major type of of problem that you have with these things might be something like a yo-yo. What would a yo-yo problem look like? Well, typically. You know, you have exactly the same force diagram. Tension pulls up and, and uh, gravity goes down, acting on the center of mass of your yo-yo. We'd still have to set up the two expressions for the linear part of the motion. It's mg minus tension. And for the, the spinning part of the motion, uh, tension is the only reason that a yo-yo spins. So it's tension times radius times sine of 90 degrees. Okay, so uh, choose your... We, we could just make this up as, as we move and, and, um, and go along with this thing. We would have to be given, say, the tension in the problem. Maybe it's two-tenths of the weight. Okay. If that's what's given, then all of a sudden we can go ahead and solve this thing. Okay, so we can get the linear acceleration right away. Uh, 0.8 times gravity, or times little g. And we can do the same thing over here for our, um, our angular acceleration. Okay, presumably we'd be given the shape of, of the objects, we'd know the inertia. And our alpha is going to be 0 0.2 times the weight radius over whatever the moment of inertia is. And we have our answers. All of that is done as soon as we're given the tension for a yo-yo. All of this is done as soon as we're given the um, something about the friction force, if we have a rolling problem. Okay, so even though we, we have this extra unknown, um, A and alpha are no longer related to each other, we can find them by doing exactly the same thing that we always do. F equals ma for linear motion, torque equals I alpha for the rotational motion, and, and we can solve these things. Okay, so I hope this helps. I hope this takes a little bit of the fear out of rolling and slipping at the same time. Um, but, but they're very doable. Okay, so uh, until next time, we'll see you later.